I've upgraded to Catalina, iOS 13.3, and the latest NativeScript version, and I have a bit of a problem. Whenever I run a project and I don't have a simulator running, an iOS simulator, it brings up the iPad simulator. So here I'm gonna go TNS run iOS without giving any other flags or anything like that, just TNS run iOS. And this used to bring up my default simulator, which was an iPhone 8, because most of my apps that I work on are iPhone first and then iPad later if it's necessary not iPad first, but this is bringing up the iPad simulator. So there it is. And this is really annoying. How do I solve this problem? I'll offer you some options of what you can do. And while none of these really make me happy, at least it's going to give you a way forward and a solution that you can choose. All right, so here we are. I ran TNS run iOS. I gave that command. That CLI command and it brought up the iOS iPad Pro as the simulator. Now, what can I do here? I could, of course, go up to my simulator menu at the top. You don't see that here, but I have it here. And there's a hardware menu option and then device and then iOS 13.3. And then I can select an iPhone. I could also do it from the icon that's in my taskbar. So I can click on simulator and device iOS 13 and then select iPhone 8. All right, so this is gonna bring up the iPhone 8, just like that, but it's not gonna start the app that I was running, my NativeScript app, in the iPhone simulator. So in order to do that, I need to go back to my command line and terminate my process and issue the command TNS run iOS again. I have two simulators running right now, the iPad one and iPhone 8. So now that I have two running, the NativeScript CLI will detect both of those and it'll deploy this app to both of those devices. So here we are. We now have the same app running on both devices. This is not ideal, of course, because all I wanted was to develop the iOS one for iPhone. So I dug around for this and tried to find a solution. There are some suggestions that say all you got to do is just close the iPad simulator and whatever you have open will be the default one the next time it starts. So I can keep this open and if I need to restart my app while I'm developing, I can just issue the command TNS run iOS and this will use the open simulator that's already open. It'll detect that and it'll deploy the app to this open simulator and use that. So this is an option for you. You can open the simulator that you want and then just keep it open and keep using that. That's what's happening right now. It's not ideal for me because next time if I'm starting a new app or if I'm just restarting my environment I might have the simulator closed so if I close the simulator right here and I rerun my app TNS run iOS I get the iPad Pro popping up again as the default this is super annoying here's another solution for this the CLI allows you to specify what simulator you want to use now still this adds an extra parameter to the command line which i don't like either so i'm going to show you another way after this in a minute here's what you do i'm going to close all my simulators i'm going to close this ipad one terminate my process let's clear this and i'm going to issue the command tns device ios and then dash dash available devices all right so this will list all the available devices that i have for ios Here's iPhone 8 that I want to run this on, and then all these other ones. Now, for some reason, the iPad Pro is the one that's popping up, one of these two. Nowhere does this say that there's some simulator that's marked as a default, which is the really annoying part. So what you can do is have this device name handy right here, iPhone 8, and issue the command. Let me just clear this. TNS run iOS, and then dash dash device. And then in quotes, you can say iPhone 8. So that name has to match the device name from that list that I showed you. And if you do that, then you get the iPhone 8 popping up. So this is an option. This works. And this way you can just pop up whatever you want, whatever the simulator you want. Now, you don't want to be typing that out every time, of course, on the command line, which is pretty annoying and gets in the way. So one option you can do is go into your code editor and um, if you go to package.json you can have a script here you can add a scripts section and you can call this one run iphone and this will just be the command tns run ios dash dash device and then 
in single quotes, I'm going to say iPhone 8. Now you have a script here in package.json. So when you're out here on the command line, all you got to do is just say npm run. And what did I call it? Probably not the best name to call it run iPhone, but I'll leave that up to you. Run dash iPhone. Okay, so it's going to issue that command underneath TNS run iOS dash dash device iPhone 8. And this will bring up the iPhone 8 device simulator. Okay, just another option. Finally, there's one more option that will allow you to use the TNS run iOS command without any extra parameters. But this is not my favorite option. And it's a little bit more destructive, especially if you're going to be working with an iPad simulator later. However, the destruction is not permanent. You can still get back. Let me just show you. Open up Xcode. And uh, I have this test project, which I'm going to just open here. This is really nothing. It's just a test. And here are the simulators that you can select where to run the test project. And there's this button here, add additional simulators. If you click that, you'll come to this screen right here that allows you to manage the simulators that are installed and available on your machine. So you can see that we have a bunch of iPads listed here and a bunch of iPhones as well. Now, even if you have this show as run destination deselected for the iPad, see all my iPads are deselected here, but my iPhones are selected. That's not gonna affect how your native script CLI is going to connect to the devices. So the devices are still gonna be available for the native script CLI to run on. Unfortunately, this does not control that function. All this controls, this show run as destination is what appears here in Xcode and that's it. So in order to really get rid of those iPads, you would have to come in here and say, delete. I'm gonna delete that, delete the iPad Pro, delete the iPad Pro 11 and delete this 12.9 iPad Pro. So all I have here on this list of iOS devices are iPhones. Now, this is destructive, yes, because now you don't have iPad simulators on your machine. However, you can get them back just by clicking this little button right here, the plus button, and say you wanted the, uh, the iPad Pro back. There it is. You just give your device a name, iPad Pro, and you can create it again, and there it is. Okay, I'm gonna delete that again. Now that we only have iPhones here, let's go back and make sure I'm gonna quit my simulators and say TNS run iOS. Now it's gonna do its little search for devices, and it's not gonna find any iPad devices in there. All it's gonna find are iPhones. So here we go. It popped up the iPhone 11 Pro Max. How it decides what it's gonna use next, I don't know. If anybody knows, leave me a comment down below. But I've searched on all the forums and I can't find a single solution for this. It's pretty annoying, but this is one way to do that is by deleting those devices and then bringing them back if you need those. So here we are, we're deploying an iPhone 11 Pro Max. There's our app running on the iPhone 11. So there you go, folks. Those are some of the possible ways you can work around the problem of the iPad popping up when you don't want it to. All right, I'll catch you in the next one.